All right, everybody. Today I'm working on the 1997. Is that what it was? 1996. No, 1996 uh, Chevrolet 1500. But it doesn't matter. I'm just showing how to test the relay real quick. So you see, this is what a normal four prong relay looks like. You have 85 on the bottom left, 86 on the top right, 87 on the bottom right, and 30 on the top left. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this battery and we're gonna hook up one alligator clip to the left. So that's gonna be a negative, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have one alligator clip on the negative and one on the positive, like I have here, I have one alligator clip over here that's on the, on the positive and I have one over here on the left. The white one is on the negative. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our relay here and the bottom left is 85 and the top right is 86. So if you put one alligator clip on 85, you're just gonna put the other one on 86. And I have to emphasize that it does not matter which one goes where. If power goes to 85 or uh, ground goes to 86, it really doesn't matter. As long as you have a full circuit. So if you trace the circuit, it's running from positive up through the orange alligator clip through 86 and it goes through a little coil. And then once it gets to the end of the coil, it comes out through 85 on the bottom left and follows the white alligator clip down to ground. And if you wanna see if you uh, did it right, just take off one of the alligator clips and you hear a little clicking sound. You hear that clicking sound? That's not me connecting it, it's the little arm inside the relay opening and closing. So when you have a full circuit that goes through 85 and 86 and back to the battery, it has it uh, creates a magnetic field from the coil that goes through 86 and back through 85 or 85 through 86 depending on which way you believe electricity travels because there's two theories on that the arm between 30 and 87 which is on the bottom right there's a little magnetic arm and basically that little arm is in a position where it's like this, it's it's open, and then when the coil has electricity running through it, it creates a magnetic field and pulls the little arm down into position. Now it can transmit electricity through that relay to whatever it's powering. In this case, the brake switch. Uh, brake, it's a brake relay. So uh, in a lot of cases, it's a starter or the AC compressor. So once you remove this, the little arm will open up and it won't let electricity go through there. But once you put power through the coil, it'll close. So what we're doing is we're gonna test to see if 30, which is the top left, and 87, which is the bottom right, you see these two prongs? We're gonna see if they're connected by using the voltmeter. So on the voltmeter over here, it doesn't matter which uh, brand you have, as long as it tests, uh, it's a multimeter. Uh, so it's good to have a multimeter or an ohm meter if you're gonna do this test. A voltmeter won't do it because technically a voltmeter only tests uh, voltage. So this, this one right here, it has uh, the ohm symbol on the top, omega. Uh, turn it to ohms. And then what you're gonna do is take the, the uh, leads here and you're gonna, gonna basically, it doesn't matter, connect one to the bottom right and then I'm gonna have the other one connected to the top left. So I'm gonna hold them, hold this here, and one's on the bottom right. So one lead is on the bottom right, and the other's on the top left. And it looks like this relay is good because if you look here, you can see the resistance is only 0.3. See, it goes up and down, but the lowest point it goes to is 0.3. So that's how I know that it's working well. And it'll move around a little bit, but whatever the lowest resistance value that you see, that's the one that you wanna go with because you know, unless it's touching something else, it's not supposed to, that's a resistance. So it's 0.3. So I know this relay is good and that clicking sounds a sign that it's probably good too, but you should never ever assume that that's the case. 
because um, I've seen uh, solenoids for starter. My solenoid was clicking, and when I tested it with the ohmmeter, it wasn't. And sure enough, that's why my starter wasn't engaging. So, thank you for watching the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.